and Margaret Reed McDonald. I'm a folklorist and a storyteller, and I'm from Southern Indiana. Now, my grandpa's name was Parley Garfield Reed, and this is going to be a story about my grandpa, Corton, my grandma, Ella. When my grandpa was a young man, he was courting my grandma, Ella. Well, she lived on one side of the creek, and he lived on the other side of the creek. So to visit her at night, he had to go down the field, cross the, the creek, and up to her house. Well, that was okay in the summertime, because that in Southern Indiana, where I come from, in the summertime, well, the creek is just runs bone dry, and you can walk right across on the flat rocks and not even get your feet wet. And then the winter, there's no problem, because in the winter, it freezes solid, and you can slide across on the ice. But in the spring's a different story, because in the spring, in the spring the rains come. And in the spring, the snows melt, and that creek that was bone dry in the summer can be high over your head, rushing by very dangerous in the spring. So Grandpa couldn't just wade right in in the spring. He had to check to see how deep the water was. And fortunately, my grandpa could talk frog talk. And the creek was full of frogs, of course. He'd go right down to the edge and he'd ask the little peepers that live right by the edge. How deep is it? He could talk frog talk. How deep is it? How deep is it? How deep is it? The little peepers that lived right by the edge would tell him how deep it was where they lived. And they'd say, Ankle deep, ankle deep, ankle deep, ankle deep. Oh, up to your ankles. Well, no problem, said Grandpa. I'll take off my shoes and socks. He'd duck up his stick off his shoes and socks and wade right in up to his ankles. And then he'd stop. And he called the bigger frogs, they were out a little deeper. How deep is it? How deep is it? How deep is it? And they'd call back and they'd tell him that where they were it was, but you can guess. Knee deep, knee deep, knee deep, knee deep. He'd roll up his pants legs and go in a little further up to his knees and then he'd stop and he'd call the frogs out a little deeper. How deep is it? How deep is it? How deep is it? And they'd call back where they were out there. It was belly deep, belly deep, belly deep, belly deep, belly deep. He wanted to see Grandma awful bad, so he just went ahead and waded right in up to his waist, and then he stopped before he went out to the very middle and called the granddaddy bullfrog that lived right in the middle and asked him how deep it was there. How deep is it? How deep is it? How deep is it? And that granddaddy bullfrog called back and told him the truth. He said, you better go around, you better go around, you better go around, too deep, too deep, too deep. Poor Grandpa, he had to go back up, had to go home and change his clothes, and walk a mile down to the covered bridge and cross over to go see Grandma that night.
my grandma Ella that was a true story. When my grandpa was a young man in those days, back in southern Indiana, any young teenage boy that wanted to show how husky he was, he'd be out walking in the fields and if he saw a black snake sunning itself, you know, they'll stretch out in the sun, how snakes do. And a black snake is like three foot, maybe even six foot long. They're, they're big and pretty ugly, big around too. If, but if, you, if the guy wanted to show how strong he was, he'd run up, grab up the tail, pull it around his head, and crack it like a black snake whip. And if he was strong enough, he would snap the head right off of the snake and kill him. Well, Grandpa was going down to see Grandma one night. He had his nice new shirt on a Saturday night, going down through the fields, and he saw a snake tail sticking out of the bushes. He said, oh, here I go. He ran down there, grabbed that snake with the tail, yanked it out of the bushes, whirled it around his head, and cracked it. And the darn thing backed like boom, 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 right around his neck. He almost died of fright. He realized he hadn't made sure it was a black snake. It could have been a copperhead or something poisonous. And a black snake won't bite you, but it, around your neck it could choke you to death. And then he looked down, and he had in fact snapped the head off it. And the guts were going through the all nice place. So he had to go home and change clothes that night before he went to see Grandma too.